So here we are, we're gonna get gas for the Honda. And there you go, right there. Ethanol free. I always try to use ethanol free. Okay, we have our tank and our hose plugs in. You always wanna make sure in the end of it, it's cleaned out. You don't wanna put any of the junk that's been laying in there. I usually try to keep it up high. I don't leave it laying down in the water with all the junk in it because I don't want it to rust out. I want to be able to slip right on and clip into place. And that's it. And keep my vent open just a little bit. And that's how we hook our tank up. And you're gonna have a three, t a three gallon tank on any of the smaller Honda motors you have that on there, you have a six gallon on the bigger one, all pretty much the same thing. But uh, try to leave it out of the elements. Always try to keep it covered someplace. The shed is probably best, uh, no garages, but try to keep it someplace out of the rain so that you're not getting it uh, mixing with water or anything. And this cap is starting to crack out and it will go down through that, it will wick in through there and you'll start to see your gauge will start to rust out. So then you know you're getting water in your tank. But this is one of the things we're gonna check before we start this motor up. We're gonna come over here. We're gonna find a primer bulb. Here's our primer bulb. I don't know if you can see it or not. See here has the arrow pointing up. That is the direction of your fuel. And when you squeeze a primer bulb, there are check valves in it and the valve needs to fall down. So when you try to squeeze your primer bulb, do it vertically pointing up to the sky squeeze that. Our fuel connection here is not leaking so we know our o-ring is good inside of there. And we're gonna keep squeezing this until our carbs are completely full. This is a carbureted motor. All right but with this carbureted motor we have these little things in it that I do not like. All right here we go. This guy right here on top of your top carb. It is an electronic choke. It is a, called a bi-starter valve. And there is a wax pellet in here and a needle that goes down. So your choke is automatically activated. When it warms up, it starts to come out of choke mode on its own. So this is basically a poor man's EFI. It's trying to make it work to just turn key for you so you do not have to pull out a choke to start your engine. So this actually makes more trouble than just having a choke there. So when these go bad, you have trouble starting them. It's not in choke mode or it stays in choke mode when the engine is already warm and which throws off your correct air to fuel ratio. So it makes it hard to run. So we're gonna go over that. These are on Yamahas. These are on Mercury's, Tahatsu's. Uh, I forget if Suzuki's got it probably, but they're on a lot of them. So if it's carbureted without a pull choke on the front, you're gonna have one of these. So what we do at the throttle, is we snap the throttle, we bring it back down to no throttle. So all the way back down to slow mode. And that is how you start it. You do not give any throttle on this, otherwise it will throw that off. So no throttle, that, that is the trick to starting one of these. Carbureted with the electronic choke. All right, our water is running. Usually I like to have a big bucket up around it, a 55 gallon drum that's cut off where the water level is above the water pump. I do not have one of those right now, so we're gonna go back to the Mickey Mouse ears. We're gonna make sure it stays on there though. We're gonna come over here. Fuel is primed up. The ball is solid now. I have not run this motor in three months, so we're gonna snap it. One, two, three. Arrows all the way back down to start mode. It is not advanced. Throttle is in neutral. Here's our key. Make sure your lanyard is clipped on. Most of the time when people can't start, it's because the lanyard is not on. All right, here we go. That's it, you let that electronic choke do its thing. We have our water coming out. And you can hear the engine is starting to come up a little bit. It's doing everything on its own. Because that pellet is gonna start melting. 
and the pin's gonna come out of place. And that's it, that is how you start 40 horse Honda or any of the Hondas or anybody that's carbureted that has an electronic choke. Snap the throttle, bring it back down to start position, turn the key, that's it. Alright, so it's been a few minutes. Just idling down good now. Still pumping plenty of water. We're doing so much better. With non-ethanol fuel on the system. So I'll show you here quickly. Three carbs. One, two, three. A base carb. Right here. I've always had trouble with this base carb. It never runs right on fuel up north because it has ethanol in the fuel, which always wicks moisture in to the fuel and then it goes to fouls up your carburetors. So, since I moved down here and I run only non-ethanol fuel now, all my hiccups and problems have gone away. So, that is usually why everybody up north has trouble with carburetors because of the quality of the fuel. You get the water wicks in, it goes through the system no matter what you do you just have to run through it burn it up get rid of that fuel because it's garbage try to run non ethanol fuel through your system or you call it rec gas here in north carolina but that is taking care of my problems steve romeo knows this because he always saw me playing with this one to try to get it to run right again so that is a big trick if you can get non ethanol fuel to run through this thing that's perfect if you run an ethanol fuel, you're always bound to have problems sooner or later. Nine times out of ten, up north, it's a water issue in the fuel. And that's because of that junk ethanol they put in there, and they charge you more money for, and it lowers the quality of your fuel. So there's another trick for you. If you can get non-ethanol fuel, wreck gas, and run that, do it. By all means. Even if it's 50 cents more a gallon, burn that stuff. It'll save your motor. All right, so there you have it. That's how you start. Your 40 Honda, 50 Honda, any of the smaller ones that are carbureted that have that bi-starter valve, that's the procedure you're gonna do. If you're not going to be around for a while, disconnect your fuel, let the motor run itself out on carbureted motors, not fuel injected with the fuel pump. Carbureted motors, you can do this on. Just keep letting it run. It'll run itself out of the fuel. It'll get the fuel out of the system so that you don't have it sitting in there turning bad or if you got water in that fuel, it should get everything out. You'll blow it out of the system and that's kind of like a, an easy winterization kind of right there. Not a full winterization, but that's just if you're going to be uh, gone for a month or two and you got fuel in the system, you can just burn it out that way. Just let it keep running until it dies itself out. So hopefully that'll help you. If you ever run into any trouble, CETO, give Joe Fraunhofer a call. And uh, those guys will help you out. Those guys have always been there for me, helping me out, as I used to work right next to them, too. So, get a hold of those guys. Hope that helped you. If you've been running it, your motor's hot, you have one of those bi starter valves, and you cannot start it again, this is going to be that bi starter valve is going to be giving you problems. So, try to replace that guy. And if you have any questions, give me a holler. I'll uh, answer in the comments, or if you contact me, CaptainRobThompson at gmail.com. And uh, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks again for watching.